Hey, Lon, have you heard about all this talk about pollinators? I have, but why do I even care about pollinators? Let's go have dinner. And you right. need oh. us more tonight. Oh, a bee. And you need us more than ever. And if you only realize. Pollinators are responsible for so much of the food that you eat. Chocolate, jalapenos, apples, blueberries, and so many of the things you're gonna have for dinner. Bees like us, we pollinate lots of food. Tell us about those foods, friends. Mango. Blueberry. Pale. Onion. Sunflower seeds. And canned squash. Cucumber. Coffee. Peach. Broccoli. Lemons and lunch. Apples. Grapes. Avocado. Almonds. Watermelon. Raspberries. Sweet potato. Well, technically, sweet potatoes don't need a pollinator to reproduce. But for the rest of these, we need insect pollinators to move pollen to these flowers. If the flowers aren't pollinated, the fruit or vegetable or seeds won't grow or will be smaller and less nutritious. Pollinator numbers are going way down and we haven't figured out a way to engineer a replacement for pollinators. Oh wait, maybe we could have just lots of small tiny drones. Uh, maybe Superman. Who best to be in a position to use his amazing powers. Here's the pollinator that many farmers use for their crops, the honeybee. Honeybees were imported from Europe to pollinate crops and also make honey and wax. And then there are over 400 species of gentle wild bees in Minnesota. These creatures are often confused for yellow jackets and other colony nesting wasps, which are more aggressive and can sometimes sting people. Our native bees, like the bumblebees, are colony nesting bees that live together in a small group. Then there are hundreds of other bees that are solitary nesting bees that are not colony nesters. These gentle insects live in tiny stems of plants, logs, or holes in the ground and provision a nest individually. One example of this is a leaf cutter bee. This bee actually cuts out little pieces of leaves and provisions a small nest of just a few eggs. Look, over there, some staff and volunteers are doing a survey of the pollinators at Maplewood Nature Center. This one's a bumblebee. Yeah. Yeah. How many beetles I found? And they carry their pollen on their legs and it's packed. It was napping. Oh, all right. And then the it's on there. There we go. Hey, are there other kinds of pollinators besides bees? Yeah, aren't butterflies pollinators too? You're right. Bees, butterflies, moths, beetles, hummingbirds, flies, and some bats are pollinators too. Chocolate is pollinated by a tiny fly called a chocolate midge that is also seeing a decline in numbers. I do love my chocolate. Boy, I didn't see that coming. Okay, you convinced us. So what do we need to do to help pollinators? You can plant native flowers. Flowers that bloom at different times in the seasons are important so pollinators have different foods throughout the year. Here's this fascinating book. It's called Pollinator Friendly Gardening. I love it. Maybe it'll give us some tips. Great. Here are more ways you can help pollinators. Don't use pesticides in your yard or business. Ooh. You can leave Sounds leaves, good. stems, logs, some branches, or bare soil in your yards for all sorts of insects to have habitats. And you can help scientists study bees to find out how to protect them. You can use programs like iNaturalist and Bumblebee Watch online. Woohoo! Yeah. Let's go! To help. Yeah! Yay, bees! High five! Thank you, pollinators.